Hello everyone, this is Mr. Brass, and today I will be responding to Armin Navabi of Atheist Republic. Now, despite AR being an echo chamber for Lactheists, I've been going on their Facebook since about 2016, and from then I've wanted to explore Lactheists and their natural habitat. I bought one of their members, i.e. J.D. Brucker's book, Reason Against Faith, and I have watched their YouTube videos, so you can say I'm informed on this group. Now, to give you some backstory, Armin is an ex-Muslim fundamentalist who tried to kill himself by jumping out of a building so he could get into heaven. So basically, he was such a bad Muslim that he didn't know he was supposed to kill himself by flying into buildings, not by jumping out of them. So I went looking for other atheists, because I was the only atheist I knew. And soon I discovered that there's actually a lot of us out there, and that was very encouraging, and I felt like... It felt like finding a family that I didn't know I have. Imagine believing your views are so special that you think no one else, even where you live, has ever thought about it. That shows a lot. Let's say a Muslim that is dedicating his entire life to Islam, or her entire life to Islam, that doesn't hurt a single other human being, that doesn't preach or influence anybody else's life. We think of that person as somebody that is not causing any harm, but he is causing harm. To himself, he has wasted his life to a, to a lie. Can you actually show he wasted his life to a lie? I don't believe Islam is true, nor do I believe any revealed religion is true. But if I were going to make the claim that someone has wasted their life doing X, I'd want to justify that claim so as not to just be accused of being a contrarian. Well, then on afterlife of some sort, I don't see how someone could waste their life, as it implies duties to do certain actions, which they aren't, and it implies like there's a time for reflection to be able to see what's been wasted. The Muslims that are peaceful are not or moderate they're not peaceful or moderate because they have a reformed version of Islam they're ignoring Islam they are they are abandoning Islam they are Muslim by name they're not practicing Islam they're not practicing a reform they are nice these are people that are nicer than their own religion while Armin doesn't exactly formulate it, he does seem to imply Clifford's principle, i.e., it is wrong always, everywhere, and for anyone to believe anything on insufficient evidence. It's good to note that the principle has largely been seen as unrealistic by philosophers for many reasons, such as the existence of properly basic beliefs, how we don't choose our beliefs, and etc. Also, given how the virtue of reasonableness and cognitive responsibility in authorities is grounded in an acritical, ungrounded cultural ideals, it can be said that humans naturally believe things without evidence. Dr. Mark T. Nelson in his paper, We Have No Epistemic Duties, argues basically there is no intellectual obligation to base beliefs on evidence, or to put better, no positive epistemic duties, with his use of justificational vicinity. Simply put, our intellectual circumstances gives us license and restraints to believe and not believe, and that not even with perfect knowledge of the situation, could you get an ought to believe? Looking at a pack of rabid dogs in the distance will provide many propositions to believe in, but there would be no ought to pick one proposition of beliefs over another. So instead of you ought to proportion your belief to the evidence, you should rather just say, do not believe things more strongly than the evidence warrants. Philosopher Peter Van Inwagen also jumps into Clifford's principle in his paper Listening to Clifford's Ghost, which goes into the academic disagreement on the interpretation and how two people can be rational based on the knowledge that they have even when it conflicts with someone else. Basically, academic disagreement. Well, let's get into the next clip. I've gone over how, how on Atheist Republic many times over two years that I've had to point out lies about all the re religions that AR teaches about through memes, using scholars like Muhammad Abdul Malik and Melina Muhammad Ali to show why that they're lies. Moderate Muslims do have some groundings on their interpretations, although I agree with your previous st sentiment that Islam has had its issues, which were there before the U.S. got involved. I would just say that the U.S. made it harder to negotiate and remedy some of the problems. These new reform, Western reform versions of Islam is something that is never going to happen and it's actually dangerous because it's suggesting to the West that there is a version of Islam 
that is not gonna harm you. So it's just a politically correct solution that is never gonna fly and is taking our attention away from the actual movement that is growing, that it does have a chance, that is the ex-Muslim movement. The reform movement is very condescending because it's suggesting to that the Islam, people living in the Islamic world are too dumb and too stupid to understand that there is no God. So let's just, these dumb people, let's just hope that they believe in a version of Islam that is not going to harm us because it's too soon for us to even introduce secularism and atheism. I guess you're supposed to be some sort of prophet who can see into the future to make that saying. We generally get the suggestion that there can be peaceful, moderate Islam because we have that with Christianity and it seems unwarranted to just say we can't do that with Islam without providing some justification for that. The reform movement, while I think is poisonous when it is teamed up with feminism, I'm sure there is smart people and scholars in, within the movement who may have reasonable objections to you. Why didn't you actually make an argument going against them? Also, dude, us trying to push secularism into Islam is what is causing much of the terrorism. The U.S. has tried to push secularism into these foreign lands and the result has been more terrorists who want revenge for their families being killed by drones in the effort to make the area more secular and western. Many of these places know plenty about atheism, seeing how we know atheistic communist material came into Muslims' lands, and given how atheists simply don't reproduce at a level to compete with Islam, I don't see how an ex-Muslim movement has a chance. Hey, maybe this verse that tells you that you could beat your wife, maybe it doesn't mean you can beat your wife. Try making that argument because it plainly says in black and white that you could beat your wife, that you should beat your wife, and there's a lot of hadith that supports what it actually means. Since you're not interested in actually showing me these hadiths, I'm not going to bother to make an original response to the beat your wife verse, and instead will just repeat a scripted line that I've used. Quran 434 is used to mean that men are allowed to beat their wives and that they are superior when this isn't the case. The word for su superior is kawam, which means to take care of, which simply means that men are the protectors of women. As Islamic scholar Muhammad Abdul Malik states in a study of the Quran, the universal guidance from mankind on page 88, the word for beat in this verse is adurabu, which should be to separate, and nazu should be marital discourse. This fits because of the equal action leads to equal punishment for both men, which is established in the passages like Quran 24.2 and fits with passages like Quran 4, 128, where a woman who fears cruelty from her husband should avoid him. Also, the Quran says men can't cause injury to their wife via 2 verses 231. And just verses above this in verse 19 disprove this. So this verse is saying you should separate from the wife, not beat them. The reform movement is treating the Muslim community like children. You're not giving them enough credit you're, that they might actually be reasonable enough to understand that without evidence you can't believe in things. They know that without evidence you shouldn't believe in something. The the problem isn't that they are too dumb not to understand that, it's that lack theists are too stupid to realize that people look at them like contrarians, i.e. people just doing this activism to push an agenda that isn't based on understanding things. Contrarians like, prom like theists promote themselves merely like telling people they are wrong without any grounding, just like flat earthers and anti-vaxxers or young earth creationists. The reform movement is a sugar coating for, for the poison pill of Islam. The only solution to fighting any form of delusion is to provide people with critical thinking skills to understand that what is bullshit and what is fact. I agree with the statement, but not the person making it. Anyone who has really looked on Atheist Republic Twitter and Facebook can see that it's mostly memes and posting leftist atheist articles from non-experts like Hemet Mehta. This is not a group you'd get critical 
thinking skills from. I'd recommend any non-believer to instead of going to AR, go to the Great Debate community with Steve McRae. Steve knows his shit and likes helping people become better at arguing using the best materials. Especially donate to him now that this situation with the fraud Kyle Cuntus has gone on. And I think this is a battle that we're losing. People think that secularism is winning against Islam, but Islam is growing faster. They have much higher presence on social media. They know what they're doing and they're growing. And this is something that we can't afford to get wrong. So betting on the wrong movement against Islamic fundamentalism is going to cost us dearly. And I'm telling you that ex-Muslim movement is where you have to put the fight against Islam. Why does it have to be competition between reformers and ex-Muslims? Can't you support both to try to maximize the odds of Muslim becoming less radical? already dealt with that book in a blog post, which I will reference below. While that is all for today, this is Mr. Brass saying goodbye and get wise. <laughs>